The Orion Factor is on tonight. I made very clear, we are not a, uh, at war against Islam. Not only does the Muslim world have something in common with ISIS, it has too much in common with ISIS. Is President Obama too soft on Islam in general? Some Americans say yes, including left-wing bomb thrower Bill Maher. We'll take a hard look at it. The good news is that you have an unprecedented international coalition that is serious about this. Serious about what? Most of the coalition nations will not even bomb ISIS inside Syria. We'll have a no-spin report on what's really happening in the war on terror. Do you think that America deserves being attacked by terrorists? How else are they going to get our attention? Also ahead, the crazy ACLU getting even nuttier. We sent waters out to document that. Do you believe in the war on terror? I think it's way too broad. Caution, you are about to enter the no-spin zone. The factor begins right now. Hi, I'm Bill O'Reilly. Thanks for watching us tonight. Why President Obama and Congress are not, not protecting us effectively. That is the subject of this evening's Talking Points memo. If you are not troubled about how the USA is being run, you're not paying attention. The threat from Islamic killers is growing, and our response is disorganized, to say the least. But even more dangerous than that is the fact that our government is caught by surprise time after time after time. The murder of America's ambassador in Libya, the Obama administration caught by surprise. Putin's seizure of Crimea, big surprise to the White House. ISIS invading Iraq, again. President Obama says he and his national security team were all surprised. Now, that's simply unacceptable. And the one body that could do something about it is Congress. The House and the Senate have oversight on the president and how he conducts himself in office. We have plenty of committees set up to make sure national security is being upheld. But it's not being upheld, and everybody knows it. Yet our Congress people and senators say little. A few, like John McCain and Lindsey Graham, have been outspoken about the danger to America, and they've been vilified by the left as warmongers. In fact, on the Democratic side, we hear gibberish, foolish rationalizations, or attacks on people like me who are point pointing out the danger of the worldwide jihad. Last night on 60 Minutes, President Obama stuck by his talking points. I made very clear, we are not a, uh, at war against Islam. Uh, Islam is a religion that preaches peace, and the overwhelming majority of Muslims are peaceful. But in the Muslim world right now, there is a cancer that has grown for too long that suggests that it is acceptable to kill innocent people who worship a different God. We have to get the international community to recognize this is a problem. We've got to get Arab and Muslim uh, leaders to say very clearly, these folks do not represent us, they do not represent Islam, and to speak out forcefully against them. So let me get this straight. President Obama, 13 years after 9-11, believes that he's going to get Muslim leaders to finally speak out against the jihad. He himself has had six years to do that. And what do we have? Very little in the way of Muslim nations helping the U.S. against the terrorists. So there comes a point when saying we have to get Muslim leaders to condemn the jihad is simply a waste of time. President Obama keeps insisting that ISIS is not Islamic. Well, maybe they don't practice the Muslim faith the same way he does. <laughs> but if vast numbers of Muslims across the world believe, and they do, that humans deserve to die for merely holding a different idea, or drawing a cartoon, or writing a book, or eloping with the wrong person, not only does the Muslim world have something in common with ISIS, it has too much in common with ISIS. Now that statement's a bit unfair. Most Muslims are rational, peaceful people. But Muslims abroad are afraid that if they do speak out, they'll be killed by the jihadists. Therefore, they look to leaders in countries like Pakistan, Algeria, Egypt. And what do they see? Chaos and cowardice. That's what. So it's not the individual Muslim that's the problem. It's the Muslim nations who tolerate and sometimes even support the terrorists. However, in his interview last night, President Obama remained positive. 
The good news is that you have an unprecedented international coalition that is serious about this. Uh, you know, not only do we have Arab states participating in airstrikes for the first time in a very long time and being very serious about their commitment, but you've got uh, the United Kingdom, you've got France, Belgium. You've got them doing what? The United Kingdom, France, Belgium, and other coalition nations, there are 62 of them, out of all of them, four will attack ISIS inside of Syria. Four. Let me repeat. President Obama has put together 62 nations that say they don't like ISIS and are willing to help out. Yet only four will bomb ISIS positions in Syria, and not Great Britain, France, or Belgium. They won't do it. So that's a weak coalition. A bunch of nations that are talking but not acting. And why won't they bomb inside of Syria? Who knows? What's the downside for them? The sad fact is that the United States is the only nation on earth capable of destroying the jihad. China and Russia could do it, but will not because they want to see America damaged. China and Russia's capabilities are directed toward expanding their power and limiting democracy, not fighting evil. The jihadists well understand the West does not have the will to defeat them. That's why they behead people on camera. They're arrogant. These savages don't fear reprisals because the reprisals are so weak. And that brings me to General George Patton. As you may know, I've been promoting my new book, Killing Patton. And many interviewers ask what General Patton would think about fighting the jihad. Yesterday on ABC News, George Stephanopoulos and I discussed my idea for a mercenary army paid for by the coalition, which is obviously not willing to fight itself. George Patton's name came up. Would he really believe in outsourcing our national security like that? No, Patton would want to just go in himself to do it. Uh, if George Patton were alive today, he would be saying to President Obama, give me the third, I'll go into Syria and I'll wipe them all out. And he would. That's what he would absolutely Obama wouldn't do. Approve that one. It's a worldwide war against jihad. Not going to stop. So let's win the war. And that's what George Patton would say. Let's win the damn war. Now, that's easy to say, difficult to do. The jihadists are all over the world now. And our government is befuddled, to say the least. President Obama and leaders of Congress need to sit down and find out why we are so often taken by surprise when dangerous situations happen something very wrong here and it's just a matter of time until more americans die because of it and that's a memo next on the rundown brett hume will react and later some insane guy in oklahoma city who says he's a muslim beheads a co-worker take a hard look at that awful situation in just a few moments watch fox news channel anytime anywhere fox news go the lightest or nothing the smartest or nothing the quietest or nothing the sleekest sexiest baddest safest tightest quickest harshest or nothing at mercedes-benz we do things one way or we don't do them at all introducing the all-new c-class the best or nothing I'm not afraid. I can face my third grade class trip. Tying shoes.